Do you want to put the board here? I'm Tim Schwartz, and this is my trailer. It's called Status, and uh, Status is an art project that tries to uh, allow artists to explore uh, connecting with other people in different places other than the gallery or the museum. Uh, so I do a series of residencies in the trailer, come back and we show the work somewhere else, or sometimes we take the trailer uh, to locations like this. So Yui has been at uh, the museum, the Oceanside Museum, doing a residency in the trailer for the last uh, week and a half, making a lot of work in, in the trailer, and now we're taking it around San Diego, allowing people to engage with the work there. Um, status was originally uh, a project I did to enable myself to travel around the U.S. and go to museums and libraries and archives doing research on what's being lost as archives become digital. And so I went to like 50 different archives and I met with people and saw how they were digitizing work. And I used the trailer as a point for conversations. About two years ago, uh, through the Periscope project, Patrick Shields and I were invited to do an exchange uh, with Yokohama, Japan and the Spiral Gallery and Yoko, uh, Zonahana Terrace in Yokohama. <laughs> and we went over there uh, and did a project, and that's Patrick. There he is. Hey, how's it going? So we went to Japan and we did a project together. And then, as part of the exchange, Yui came over here to uh, fulfill this exchange between Yokohama and San Diego. And so now Yui is here uh, working in the Port Journeys uh, ecosystem. So the trailer is also enabling other artists over these three days to do uh, in, envision other projects that can talk to the San Diego community in different locations. So today Armando uh, has an installation in the trailer. Tomorrow Mickey, Mickey Davis uh, will be in, in Mission Bay Area doing a project. And on Saturday, Shane uh, Anderson will be up in North County uh, doing a photography workshop and so they're each going to be using the trailer in a different way in order to connect with people. My name is uh, Armando de la Torre and uh, the title of our project is called Crossing the Line and I partnered up with uh, another artist, uh, Sereni. Uh, Lisaraga. So basically what we did was uh, an investigation uh, of this site of, uh, of Pepper Park and the general surrounding areas. Protected wetlands on this side, there's uh, marine industrial, there's uh, boat industries, uh, nat nature preserves. So um, in order to better understand this area we, we wanted it to document by doing a um, we picked up a lot of objects from the area, um, found objects, and uh, we, we kind of uh, analyzed these objects kind of like in a, in a very ar archaeological sense. We uh, documented these, and so we placed all these objects inside the Airstream, and then we uh, created a, both an audio uh, soundtrack of, of, the, of the sound and a video animation objects that we found in, in the area. And, and now we're also documenting uh, the stories that we can get from, from being on site. So this is a, a, a site map uh, of, the, of Pepper Park in the area. And we're asking people to help us make this map by uh, giving them, um, we give them a piece of paper and a pen so that they can uh, notate information, stories or observations that they make in the park. The, the audio tracks are from the people who use the park and this is uh, them telling us a little bit of, of the stories from this area and it, the, so the audio track is a lot like the map in that they uh, through, through that dialogue uh, we kind of come to understand uh, more of the environment. Like that's so funny. Totally different.
people uh, flying across and seem to skip from weight pit to weight pit. And I'm sure, I, I, maybe I'm embellishing a little bit, he jumped up. Okay, he wouldn't just say, oh, there it is. I see. And he jumped up because he was amazed. He was in awe. Now, that's a day I my name is Nikki Davis, and I'm an artist and filmmaker um, in Los Angeles. And in 2012, I was invited by Visual Communications and their Arm with a Camera program to make a short film. And I decided to make a film about Chamorros in San Diego. Um, I'm Chamorro American myself, and uh, I grew up in Georgia. And so a lot of my life was spent off the island. And so when I started meeting people in the Chamorro community here in San Diego, I found out that it was the largest off-island population. Um, and that's how I came to know Mario Borja and the Sackman Chamorro Project. Um, and they essentially became the subject of my film. So today, Mario and his crew are with us. If you ask somebody from Guam uh, what a Sackman canoe is, they might not be able to tell you what it is. And so Mario set out to find this large canoe and uh, through a lot of help, he came across uh, the, a drawing by a Commodore, a British Commodore named George Anson, who um, in 1742, um, was sailing around Micronesia and captured probably one of the last Sackmans, uh, took it back to uh, the UK, dismantled it, and uh, took a technical drawing of this canoe, and then burnt the canoe. Mario has this project called 500 Sails, and um, when the Spaniards came to Guam in in probably Jordan Anson's travel log, it's documented that what this person could see from their ship were at least like 500 sails. Nowadays, that's kind of unheard of around the island because this technique was, you know, kind of stamped out. Because the Sackman Chamorro pro project begins with a technical drawing of the canoe. I thought that it was only fitting that I should have a drawing that brings the ship back to life. And back to 500 sales, since he has this project, he's involved with 500 sales project, I thought, oh, well, maybe I can get five, I need to accumulate 500 drawings. So Mario built the canoe to life, and I want to draw the canoe to life, because the, a drawing was the canoe's death sentence. My name is Shane Anderson. I'm an artist and an educator based here in, in San Diego. We're here in the, uh, the North County, um, San Diego coast in, in Carlsbad. You know, I'm, I'm staring at the, the ocean with uh, paragliders and, and sailboats cruising by, you know, lots of recreational and, and leisure activity. But um, behind us here, you've got uh, a power plant and um, what's about to be this uh, desalination facility. I lived in Malibu for a decade before moving down here um, where you saw um, things like um, mudslides shutting down the coast highway and, and causing property lines to shift as they fall into the ocean. So, you know, we see oil tankers going by, we see military planes flying by, you know, there's a lot of different activity that I think, you know, a lot of us get lost in our little scuba diving and then surfing, surfing activities and don't really look at all the, the stuff that is going on and, and, and questioning what is our role in all of this? Looking at a, a series of, of retaining wall structures that I had shot um, from, from Tijuana up to the um, LA area and, and felt like it was a, a good springboard to um, come up with a workshop to get people involved looking at this liminal space that we have here um, along the coast of California that's constantly changing and evolving. Proposed bringing uh, Riz on board as well, who's been doing a number of community 
photo workshops. My name is Rizelle and I am part of the Traveling Tin Types project. What I've done is we put together these, uh, they're actually ice fishing tents and I use them as dark rooms and they're making these like one of a kind images called Tin Types and the thing that's really great about them is that they're like pretty instant, just kind of like an old school version of what a Polaroid is. It's called a Tin Type but we're actually using alum aluminum and it's a black aluminum plate that we coat with the light sensitive chemistries and so we go into the dark room and we put the plate with the collodion on it into a silver nitrate. It changes from like a black to a tan and that's how we know that it's light sensitive. You put that plate into the camera so you can see um, we have like tripods and cameras that people are shooting and uh, once they make their exposure they go back to the dark room. They pour on the developer and they see the image appear and, they, and then when they bring it out they put it in the fixer and that's kind of like where the magic happens. So when you when you walk by the tents, there's lots of oohs and ahs happening, and that's when the fixer kind of changes the negative back to a positive. Um, yeah, it's, it's really nice. After four years, it doesn't really get old, and everybody gets excited. And um, I enjoyed the, the whole process uh, myself, setting this stuff up here, and just all the questions that are being asked about what's going on, why we're here. Uh, no, we're not here to sell anything. We're here to have a, a conversation about this landscape. I'm from Japan, so this project is cloud project. So project title is Story of the Cloud. Cloud traveling uh, in San Diego and after cloud traveling to Japan in Yokohama. And I will introduce uh, Yui Inoue, uh, she will be an artist in residence from now on, for a, uh, from here on to a month. Uh, she'll be staying in San Diego. She uh, likes to involve uh, different people. And she doesn't make it by herself. She, she makes things with people. Uh, so we figured this is a, would be a really wonderful way to kind of get uh, different communities involved with each other. I sometimes knitting, uh, sometimes sewing, we make together and Crowd is symbol to connecting various uh, people and place, and so sky is connecting. So mm -hmm. crowd is crowd can go everywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let the 